This is a cry for help. He's dying. <laughs> Accidental suicide. Is it really a suicide? No. It's a situation that he put himself in. What's up, what's up guys, what's up AML family? Before we get into this video, I gotta give you guys a little backstory on it because without that, you're gonna be lost. But this one is a cry for help. Joe, it's my roommate. We live in a house in Kensington and we all share bathroom and kitchen. On this floor is six rooms. Joe's been living here for a couple months now. His thing is he likes to drink. When he gets drunk, he goes out there and do a little tricking. You know, he liked the girls. That's his thing. I had conversations with him, some of the girls that I interviewed, I saw them in his room. Not my business. He's a grown man. They are grown women. He's just a lonely older guy filled with hopelessness. So what made him decide what was the reason behind this whole situation? I'll tell you. He gets drunk. He goes in front of the building, look for girls, bring them upstairs, and have his, his fun. A lot of the young girls take advantage of him. They know he drinks, so they'll steal from him. I talked to some of the girls he've done dates with, and they told me what they did to him. And I'm like, <laughs> But this whole situation right here, I just want to give you a backstory on it so you can have an understanding. So apparently this female that you're looking at right now, I had a talk with her after this whole thing was over with. I tried to get her on camera for her to tell her side of the story, but you know, it didn't happen. But she told me what happened. She said she she was walking and he called her over and he wanted to do a date with her. So she was cool with it. They came upstairs and you know, she told him, said, listen, I have to do my shot first. And he was like, okay, I wanna, I wanna try some. And she was like, what, have you done it before? He was like, no. And she was like, you know, this could kill you, right? And he was saying, I don't care. It's not gonna kill me. That's what she's telling me. He wanted to go buy more of that for the girl. So they went and got more and they came back. So now the girl is doing her thing and you know, she's apparently starting to feel it hot. And he never done dope before in his whole life from what she told me. He never did it before, but she was saying that she wasn't paying him any attention 
so he sort of feels some type of way. But he said that since you're not paying me any attention, I'm going to sniff this bag. And she was like, you don't want to do that. It can kill you. It can take your life. So he took the bag and he pretended like he was going to sniff it. And he didn't sniff it. So she thought he was joking. But the second time around, he said the same thing that he was going to sniff it. She doesn't pay him any attention. And she was like how she is right now, out of it. And he did it. So I guess he was starting to feel the effect of it. And he told us, say, listen, I got to go to the bathroom. And this is what happened. When he came to the bathroom, apparently he passed out. He OD. And she, in her own world, out of it, can't save him. Thank God I was home because something told me go to the bathroom. Usually I'm not home, I'm usually out. But something told me stay home today. Now, usually the other people that live here will be here, but everybody is out. So when I came to go to the bathroom, this is what I saw. And the girl, at the time, she woke up. After all this, me doing all this, she woke up. And we gnaw came him. We got the gnaw can, and we gnaw came him. And he still wouldn't wake up. But, you know, did everything that I know I could do to help. Call the ambulance, everything. So we're waiting for the ambulance to come. You know, I can't really do too much to him because I'm not an expert. I don't want to, you know, cause any more damage to him. But yeah, that was the story. The girl told me that's what happened to him. He did a bag of dope and he came to the bathroom and she was out of it and he was out of it. So thank God I was here and I saw this, called the ambulance, we not came him and thank God the ambulance came on time man. They knocked him again while they was here. He still wouldn't wake up. His eyes was like he was gone. He was dead. It's scary, he was dead.
So after all this was said and done, he went to the hospital, the girl left. I think like two days or the next day after, I saw him and I told him what happened. I said, Joe, you know what happened to you? He was like, no man, what happened? I, I explained to him exactly what happened. And he was like, wow. He was like, thank you so much, man. You saved my life. He even went in his room, those beers that you saw, he brought those beers to my room to say that he would never drink beer again. And that he would fall back. And I said, okay, all right, man, you know, just don't do nothing stupid like that next time because you died. And if I wasn't here, it, you, you know, the longer you stay out, you're not breathing. Who knows? So I guess I was here at this particular time for a reason to save your life. And he was very happy. The next couple days he came to my room, knocked my door. Oh Malcolm, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This that I said, it's okay, man, you know, I would want you to do the same thing for me if I was in your shoes. So after this whole scenario, few weeks pass on by, a month pass on by. What is he doing? I don't know if he's still doing the, the dope, but he's still doing the girls coming to his room. <laughs> anyway, guys, I just wanted to give y'all a backstory on that. Now, Lou, coming from Kensington, bringing y'all raw content straight from the trenches of addiction. This is real life. It's not a game, guys. Open your eyes. Get the hell out of this life before the devil come and take you away. It's not worth it. The demons holding on to demons. That's what you're doing. It's nothing else. It's not worth it. These demons ain't doing nothing for you. Just making you suffer. <laughs>